all alone. <laughs> and it's good news. It's comfy. Stand up. Yes. Before them sit down. Yeah. Okay, we'll be joined by uh, Milan Dennerstein shortly. Thank you all very much for taking the time to come down. I'd like to welcome the members of the Senate and the members of the Assembly who are here today, uh, as well as the uh, legislative leaders who you'll hear from in a moment. Uh, we have good news. Uh, we have reached agreement on a, a piece of legislation that we believe will uh, be significant in our fight and effort and struggle against heroin. It is probably the top priority for the end of this legislative session. I know it is uh, a bill that's been the top priority for me. Uh, I believe I speak for my colleagues when I say the same thing. Uh, this is a terrible problem that is facing the state. Uh, they say in substance abuse, uh, drug abuse treatment, the first step is to uh, admit the reality, right? Denial is not an option. Uh, and we shouldn't deny the problem that we currently have with heroin. It is growing. Uh, it's growing exponentially. Uh, New York is, has a much more aggravated problem than the rest of the country. The numbers in New York are worse. The numbers in the Northeast uh, are worse than the rest of the country. One third of all the seizures of heroin were in the state of New York nationwide. Uh, it's also uh, worse in some ways. People say, well, we had heroin in the 60s and 70s. This heroin epidemic is worse than the heroin epidemic in the 60s and the 70s. The drug is more potent. The drug is less expensive. You're talking about $5 bags, $10 bags. It's more addictive. It has affected younger people. 60s, 70s, heroin average age uh, for the user was 28 to 30 years old. This is uh, late teens and getting younger as time moves on. So it is a significant problem for, uh, for sure. This legislation does a number of things. First of all, uh, it makes it uh, easier for an individual to get treatment because it makes it easier for insurance companies to actually cover the treatment. There's been a lot of confusion with insurance companies uh, not covering treatment for her heroin uh, and opioid addiction um, or disputing coverage uh, and making treatment much harder and much less accessible for an individual. Uh, by this piece of legislation, the state will issue a definition of what is medically necessary and there'll be one standard definition of what is med medically necessary. So insurance companies, frankly, can't play games and decide who gets treatment and who doesn't get treatment. Uh, that'll be a major, major step forward. In terms of public safety, uh, this piece of legislation increases penalties uh, for practitioners and pharmacists who abuse their position by selling controlled substances to patients illegally. It takes it from a D felony to a C felony which means the maximum sentence goes from five and a half years uh, instead of two and a half years. We're also giving law enforcement more tools to prosecute organized criminal activity by adding the sale of prescription drugs to the Enterprise Corruption Act. We have an education component where SCD will ha uh, update their curriculum on substance abuse to speak specifically to heroin and to opioids. Uh, and we have a public awareness campaign uh, that we're going to launch to talk to parents and providers about this problem. Uh, last week, I announced uh, some executive actions. We spoke about doubling the number of state police in the narcotics detail, 100 more troopers. Uh, that will continue. Uh, and also, we had signed a Good Samaritan 9-11 law several years back. Uh, and that law will also be applicable to this situation. Uh, I believe this is a comprehensive approach. It has a public safety component, also has a public health component, also has a public awareness campaign. Uh, I think you put this together with the actions of the state police who have already been doing great work 
on this issue, and I think uh, the state will have a very, very comprehensive approach. Uh, we have to remember that government is not always the answer, right? Government is not going to solve the heroin problem. It takes all of us, its parents, its friends, its peers, its community leaders, uh, but we are doing our part. I want to uh, applaud the sponsors of this bill who worked very hard. This was not an easy agreement to reach. I'd like to applaud the legislative leaders uh, who also worked very hard. It's a complex topic. There were very strong opinions. And compromise uh, is always right in concept, but it's difficult to reach in practice. Uh, so I want to thank the legislative, legislative leaders once again uh, for their good work. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Senate co-leader Dean Skelos. Thank you very much, Governor. As we all know, the heroin crisis affects families in every community of our state. Uh, this deadly drug has destroyed people's futures, uh, torn apart families, and taken lives that once held promise. Earlier this year, my co-leader Jeff Klein and I convened a Senate Joint Task Force on heroin and opiate addiction led by Senator Phil Boyle. This bipartisan effort thoroughly examined the issues surrounding the increase in drug abuse, addiction, and drug-related crimes in New York State. I want to especially uh, commend Senator Boyle for his dedication to addressing the critical issue. Senator Boyle has traveled extensively to uh, all parts of the state, 18 forums, and I can say there was probably more participation by members uh, at all these hearings because of the recognition of the seriousness of this problem and how it is gripping and growing in our state. <laughs> the input of our task force members, hundreds of experts, parents, recovering addicts, and others, other concerned New Yorkers all helped to develop comprehensive recommendations that combat an addiction crisis. And today I'm grateful that we will have a series of proposals that put many of these recommendations into action and provide real solutions in the fight against heroin and opiate abuse. I want to thank the Governor, Assembly Speaker Silver, Task Force Vice Chairman Mike Nazzolio and Senator Carlucci, and all the members who helped craft these life-saving proposals. Our work is not done, but today we have taken a great step forward providing the tools needed uh, to put an end to heroin, to put an end to the hold that heroin has on so many of our families and communities. Thank you. We'll hear from Senate Co-Leader uh, Jeff Klein. Senator. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Governor. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Skello, Speaker Silver. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, Senator Boyle and uh, Senator Carlucci, uh, who is one of the co-chairs of our Heroin Task Force. Uh, clearly, this is a problem that's been with us. Uh, over the last uh, several years. Uh, it started with an addiction uh, to prescription drugs. And uh, when uh, people found who were abusing prescription drugs uh, that the street price uh, was very, very high, they unfortunately turned to heroin. And uh, heroin prices uh, have plummeted ever since. Uh, this caused an, academ an epidemic that really uh, knows no bounds. Men, women, uh, all age groups, all socioeconomic groups, uh, so I'm very proud that we were able to come up with a comprehensive package, uh, which I think really cracks down on the illicit sale of heroin and other illegal prescription drugs, uh, but also provides uh, meaning for help uh, for people with treatment. Uh, before today, uh, insurance companies were unwilling to really cover uh, the treatment uh, that goes uh, with this addiction. Uh, so I think today we're sending a very, very important message. Uh, we're not going to tolerate heroin sales in our state. We're going to crack down on this illicit drug, but at the same time, uh, we're going to provide meaningful help uh, for those who really need treatment. Thank you again, Governor. Thank you, Thank you Senator. Uh, I'll tell you how excited the Speaker is uh, to have this bill agreement. He's actually more excited about this agreement than having the Rangers in the Assembly Chamber. That's how excited he is. With that, Speaker Silver. Thank you, Governor. Few occurrences in life are more disheartening, more disturbing, and more frustrating than the enslavement, self-destruction, and death caused by addiction. Given its prevalence, I would guess that many in this room know someone is, 
losing someone or has lost someone to drug or alcohol abuse. It is devastating to families, it weakens communities, and it is taking an enormous toll in our state. What we have lost to addiction in human potential alone is incomprehensible. It is easy for those who are not fighting this plague to say, hey, they're addicts, who cares? Let them self-destruct. We care. The families of the addicted care. The medical community cares. The law enforcement community cares. The legislators care. No civilized society turns away from its own. And we will not accept a paradigm where rock stars and movie stars and a professional athlete are the only people worth saving. Every year, I meet with the Coalition for Community Services, and I meet and listen to young people who are making the arduous trek back from addiction. It is a fight that can be won, individual by individual, with education, with prevention, with efforts to reduce the stigma associated with drug treatment. Today, we're sending the message that the state of New York is getting more involved in the fight against heroin and opioid abuse than ever before. Last week on Long Island, Governor Cuomo spoke comprehensively and eloquently about the heroin epidemic, and he is absolutely correct in saying that this is not a fight government can win alone. We need citizens and families, neighbors and communities to join us in rising to this immense challenge. And today we're providing New Yorkers with the educational resources, the insurance coverage, and law enforcement tools to strengthen our efforts. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership, both in guiding us to this agreement and for increasing the number of police units assigned to this fight. We commend as well our colleagues in the Senate for conducting hearings and advancing recommendations to address the epidemic. I'm especially proud of my colleagues in the Assembly, members of both sides of the aisle, for their contributions to this agreement. I particularly want to acknowledge the chair of our Committee on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse, Assemblymember Steve Simberwitz, who conducted public roundtables earlier this year in concert with the chair of our Committee on Health, Assemblymember Dick Gottfried, Chair of our Committee on Codes, Assemblymember Joe Lentol, the Chair of our Committee on Insurance, Assemblymember Kevin Cahill, and all of the sponsors and supporters of our legislation. And if I might, I want to recognize all the families, the substance abuse counselors, the health and law enforcement professionals who are fighting this battle on the front lines. This agreement would certainly not be possible without their critical input. These are sound, thoughtful measures. We're confident that they will help us stem the tide of destruction being wrought by heroin and opioid addiction. Once again, Governor, thank you for your leadership. Without it, we couldn't come to this agreement thank today. You. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, we applaud uh, the work in both houses. Uh, Senator Boyle and his task force, Assemblyman Simbrooks and his task force that really did extraordinary work. They were all over the state. Uh, they actually last month logged more miles than Lieutenant Governor Bob Duffy. That's, <laughs> that's how much uh, they worked. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, I believe this was the, the top order of business for us to accomplish this session, and we're proud uh, that we did. We're working on other pieces of legislation. We're working on medical marijuana. We don't have an agreement yet, uh, but there is uh, more time on the clock, and we're going to work uh, up until uh, the bell tolls. Uh, we're working on a piece of legislation that would um, justify teacher evaluations and make adjustments in the teacher evaluations given Common Core. Uh, and those are probably the top two uh, uh, issues that we're working on. Uh, and we're literally working on them as we speak. Uh, we're going to go back and uh, continue our meeting on both of those efforts uh, after this event. Uh, I have said that I'll do a message of necessity on these issues. So if we have an agreement before the legislature ends, 
uh, we could actually uh, vote on it. So uh, that's one less obstacle. We'll take a couple of questions, uh, but just a couple, and then we're going to go back to work. But again, congratulations to all on really a fine piece of work. Good question. I have no answer, but it's a good question. Does anyone know? Marlon, would you happen to know? Um, anyone from DFS? The, the changes will be effective and as of April 2015, so therefore they'll be taken into account in the budget next year. Um, I, I think there's a sense that the dollar value will be approximately $25 million. Excuse me one second, Zach. There's a cost to treatment, Casey. There's also a cost to not treating the illness, right? Um, very few people get better from heroin on their own. Uh, and not only do you destroy their lives and the lives of people around them, uh, it can be very expensive, multiple hospitalizations, et cetera. So when they, people talk about cost of drug treatment, I also like to remind them there's a uh, high cost to not treating them, and I would argue ultimately the cost is higher if you don't treat uh, successfully the drug addiction. I'm sorry, Zach. I am a pliable person as a general rule. Wouldn't you say I'm pliable? Let me check. Yeah. <laughs> very pliable. I am a veritable Gumby. Uh, so yes, as a general rule, I am pliable. I didn't mean that as a joke. Dan. That's a good thing. The, um, uh, the, however, when it comes to the medical marijuana bill, I, it's fair to say I'm slightly less pliable than usual. Uh, because the consequences are very serious here. You know, there are some situations where there's very high upside and there's a very high downside. And medical marijuana, if you do it right, you can help thousands of people literally who are in terrible, desperate situations. Uh, on the other hand, if the system doesn't work, you can uh, have a, uh, a public safety debacle if it doesn't work, right? We spend billions of dollars trying to uh, fight drugs in society. Uh, we law enforcement, all sorts of a whole infrastructure. We don't want to create inadvertently another pathway for marijuana to enter society. Uh, marijuana is a gateway drug. Marijuana leads to other drugs. We're here talking about heroin and opioids and the problems we have there. So if we do this wrong and the marijuana that was supposed to go to the right person winds up going to the wrong person, uh, then we've actually made the situation worse. And Zach, history is full of examples of good ideas with uh, bad results, right? And when you're dealing with drugs and controlled substances, obviously it's very sensitive. So I want a system that can help people, but that is safe. You know, Kim, we're working very hard, and we're working through the issues. I can't tell you now, um, but it is, uh, I, I want to make sure we don't make a mistake on this one. It's very hard to put the genie back into the bottle if you do it wrong. Look, in, in truth, the reason we're in this situation is because the Board of Regents and Mr. King didn't handle it, right? That's how we got here. Uh, these are problems that have developed from the improper uh, rollout of Common Core, in my opinion. Uh, and we addressed the issues with the students, and now we're trying to address the issues uh, with the teachers. So that's the only reason we are where we are. This is not an issue that the legislature would have been dealing with if it had been handled 
properly by the Board of Regents. We have not. Um, there are a number of uh, corrections primarily from the budget uh, document that was prepared and done. You know, doing the budget uh, is a, a feat of uh, logistics and operations, and uh, some items uh, inadvertently dropped out of the budget on a technical level, and that's primarily what the bill is about. Uh, there may be some stray cats and dogs uh, that we may be looking to work on also, but it's primarily a technical correction bill. No, not at this point. We don't have a bill either at this point. Yeah, well, we're not discussing any specific bill, just a number of issues. And we don't have... They're just they're premature because they're just discussions at this point with one house or the other, and we have no agreement and no bill, uh, and I'm not optimistic that we'll have one uh, in any event. It depends what's in the bill. How much input or discussion have you had with the U.S. Department of Education on that issue? Do you feel as if the state is operating on a timetable to get a teacher evaluation change done sometime this week? The, Nick, the teacher evaluation system, we have the timetable. We said when we applied for the race to the top funds uh, years ago as a condition to accepting the race to the top funds that we would implement the teacher evaluation system. So that was the timetable. That, by the way, predates me. It was done before I got here. The state of New York said we'll have a teacher evaluation system in exchange for receiving the race to the top funds. Um, and then it's been fits and starts in implementing the teacher evaluation system. Uh, and this is now another hiccup in uh, part of the score in the teacher evaluation system relied on common core testing for most school districts. As we've said that we think the transition to common core has been problematic, the teacher's point is, well, then you have to adjust for that in the teacher evaluations. But we're implementing a system that should have been implemented years ago. That would be my hope, yes. It's not my expectation, but that would be my hope. Governor, Speaker would know better if you'd like to comment. Well, I just say that uh, our members believe that 10 uh, is the way to go. The governor sent the bill with all 10 points in it. We've passed the bill with all 10 points in it, and they believe that all 10 points should be the uh, conclusion. Let's take one more, and then we're going to go back yeah, to work. I'd like to comment on it. The Senate received the 10 points broken down, and we passed nine out of the 10. They're both correct statements. That's why I'm the governor, because they're all, but the legislative leaders are always right. You're right, you're right, you're right. Everybody's right. Top advisor to Rob Ashmarino is criticizing you for working well with the governor over the last three and a half years. What did you make that criticism of the Arab News Act? Okay, I think you have your answer. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you in a bit.